Introducing the LaFerrari. Ferrari builds cars like this roughly once every decade. And this one accomplishes three feats of appropriate magnitude. One, with 950 horsepower combined, it's the most powerful Ferrari ever. Two, it's the first hybrid Ferrari ever. And three, it's named after the company, and you thought the Enzo had shoes to fill. As you'd expect, it represents the top tier of Ferrari technology. The carbon fiber tub, for example, is built by the same team that makes the Formula One cars, and it's baked in the same autoclaves. Our time behind the wheel took place over a brief day at Ferrari's home court, the morning at the 1.9 mile Fiorano development track, and the afternoon on the mountain roads surrounding the factory. had roughly eight laps at Fiorano, but it was impressive how easy the LaFerrari was to drive. Not to say it was unintimidating, you're certainly aware of the awesome power, but the learning curve felt approachable. So I've just done a lapping session in the LaFerrari, and it's, it's a hell of a car. Yeah, there's pretty much ridiculous power everywhere, but it's the power delivery uh, that's so interesting. The e-motor that's working on the differential, the transaxle, just applies this immediacy to the throttle response that I didn't believe that this V12 needed before driving the car, but now I'm a huge fan of it because it just makes the engine feel so much more powerful. Like right there, just that instantaneous throttle response. And this engine was already powerful, but now it just seems even more. The other really interesting thing is the steering feel. It's kind of big, uh, has a big area on the center to play with. But once you start uh, dialing in steering angle, the gain is really quick in that it seems to turn exponentially more aggressive the more you turn the wheel such that you're doing like a quarter turn to basically do a 180 like I'm about a quarter there on a you know decently long corner it's crazy I can dive on the brakes at 260k there having done three laps in the car total and that's fine I do that without a problem I forget there's a turn there. <laughs> this thing is phenomenal. <laughs> and this car very much makes you feel good about yourself. The LaFerrari looks deceivingly small. It's actually longer and wider than the McLaren P1 and Porsche 918, though it's shorter in height than both. It's a beautiful car in detail, from the side view mirrors to the accentuated black body gap that evokes all the great Ferraris, 288 GTO, F40, and F50, and so on. My favorite part is the rear, how the black line meets the taillights, how the exhaust pipes poke out to the lower wings, and of course, the F1 light at the bottom. As a whole, it has this eye-catching and somewhat alien aura, looking like a product of Ferrari from the year 2025. Ferrari claims 0 to 60 acceleration takes less than 3 seconds, a cautious estimate especially compared to the McLaren P1 we tested. I brought along our trusty V-Box to validate Ferrari's performance claims, but the company refused to let us test the car. We'll have to wait to test one later. Typically when you do these things, 
drive some Italian supercar on the road, you realize it's just an exercise of frustration. The roads are too tight, you have too much power, and you can't really do anything that's fun. It's very different in this car, and that's crazy. This is a 950 horsepower Ferrari, and I'm finding I enjoy it on the road a lot. For reasons like that. <laughs> Stability control is smart. It gives me the amount of control I want. The trans is shifting pretty much where I'd want it to for this road. I'm staying right in the torque. I'm having a great time. And this is, this is a weird experience, considering that Ferrari has spent so much time on the ergonomics of this car, and they've got it right. When has Ferrari ever cared about ergonomics? And here we are in a car that nails it. First, having no seat structure, the seat's just bolted right to the tub. And that means your body's just part of what the chassis is doing. Your body's feeling everything. You can sense every action of the car right through the seat. There's no structure to dampen that, those forces. It's quite an impressive feat that the car as a whole feels so solid and controllable and easy to drive is really amazing. This thing drives so well on the road. I almost prefer doing this than driving it on the racetrack. So much fun to hustle this valuable, this powerful, this technological of a car along a mountain road. It's really good. Of course, the LaFerrari would perform excellently on the racetrack and roads it was developed on. But even with that in mind, I didn't want to stop driving it. The performance was everything you'd hope. Stunning acceleration, consistent and powerful braking, and high lateral limits. But as spectacular as those parts were, it was the LaFerrari's sheer usability on the road that impressed most. As we were wrapping the day's shoot, the thought entered my brain. This may be the best road car I've ever driven. And you look over and you see some villa off in the Italian countryside and you go, oh yes, all is right in the world. 